Ukrainians reportedly took one of the main logistical routes in the north of Crimea under fire control and Russians who are looking for every opportunity to end this war or at least stall it, they decided to come up <laughs> with the most ridiculous ultimatum. And this is just insane. But more about all of this <laughs> in just a couple of minutes. What's up investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's go straight to the point and see some most recent footage. But first of all, right here we have the official statistics by the general staff of Ukraine about Russian losses since the beginning of this war. And as you can see, approximately 110,000 Russian soldiers have been eliminated, more than 3,000 tanks, 6,000 armored personnel carriers and almost 300 helicopters and planes. And so far, in under one year, Russia has already lost more people than in the first Chechen war, in the second Chechen war, in Afghanistan war combined. Next we go to the capital of Russia, Moscow, where this last night the building of the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs of Russia has been caught on fire. The main diplomat of Russia, Sergei Lavrov, he is a smoker, so I'm not sure if these events are related. Next we go back to Ukraine, where today in Kherson, Rivne, Kirovgrad and Dnipro regions, the security services of Ukraine did even more searches inside Ukrainian monasteries. And during this investigation they were able to find the pro-Russian materials, the Russian flags and Russian memorabilia. Our next stop brings us all the way across the border to Belarus, to the city of Baranovichi. And as you can see from this picture, another military convoy of Russian military vehicles arrived to this country. The majority of these vehicles were Kamas and Urals personnel transporters as well as fuel carriers. And another interesting fact is that the majority of these vehicles already arrived with the Z letters on their sides. And then as you go all the way to the southwest, literally next to the border with Poland to the city of Brest, we can see another military convoy of Russian military vehicles arriving to this place. Speaking about Brest, recently the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, also visited the military camp where both Russian and Belarusian soldiers are supposedly training together. And later, as a result of his internal investigation and questionnaire, he realized that yes, Belarus is ready to repel any attack against the country. But okay, jokes aside, we can no longer deny the fact that both Russia and Belarus, they do assemble forces to the northern border with Ukraine. But just like I mentioned in my previous video, I personally do not think that they will invade Ukraine from the north, simply because they do not have enough resources. Instead, they might show their intentions and make it look like they're about to invade and by doing so, they will start visiting and talking with the western politicians so that they will force Zelensky to look for a compromise. Because I mean it is no longer a secret that it is Russia who needs this peace, at least temporarily, way more than Ukraine. But nevertheless, you can never underestimate your enemy during this war. For this reason, in case something does happen, I will always be here to report on these events. And if you don't want to miss any news as soon as they start happening, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel. You can also follow me on Instagram, because this weekend, as always, I'll be doing a Q&A, and this is your perfect opportunity to ask me any question you want. Alright, and before I talk about this pleasantly surprising news from Crimea, allow me to give you a very quick update from the East. And first of all, according to the report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians continue their offensive along Svatove Krimin road to regain their lost positions, but Ukrainians were able to repel these attacks. And as always, the main focus of Russians in this area was around Bakhmut city as well as to the west of Donetsk. Russians also attempted several attacks next to Spirne, Bakhmut, Klishinivka, Kurdyumivka and Marinka, and Ukrainians were able to repel some of them. And then according to the Russian sources, Ukrainians are actively redeploying their resource and bringing reinforcements closer to Kriminna area, 
which basically means in the near future we might see another attempt at retaking this city. And unfortunately, Russians did have a certain success in the last 24 hours. Such as, for example, once again, according to the Russian sources, specifically according to the military journalist Semyon Pegov, Russians were able to breach the defenses of Ukrainians in Solidar. Previously, Russians were able to capture Yakovlevka and Bakhmutsky and started advancing closer to Solidar from the north and from the south. And at this very moment, reportedly, the battle for the city center is still going on. And indeed, if we take a look at this map which shows us the changes in territorial control, we can see that Russians were able to advance closer to this city. Going to the city of Bakhmut itself, Russians are also reportedly pushing from the north and from the south. And as you can see, Russians were able to advance several meters, but the most important part is that the city itself still stands. And speaking about Bakhmut, right here we have the satellite image from August 1st, 2022 of how this city looked at that time. And then right here is the most recent satellite image from January 4th, 2023, which shows that it pretty much is completely destroyed. And then, as we move to the west, Recently, it has been reported that Russians attacked Kramatorsk. And as a result of this shelling, 14 residential buildings have been either partially or completely destroyed. Unfortunately, I had to blur this photo due to ongoing steel demonetization until I can figure out what's causing it. For this reason, I uploaded some of the uncensored photos and videos to my Discord and the rest will be available on my Patreon. And if you want to financially support my channel during these times, the links will be down below. Alright, and now as promised, let's talk about the South and Crimea. And first of all, according to the same report by the Institute for the Study of War, Russians started sending reconnaissance and sabotage groups across the Dnipro River. And at the same time, they continued to build defensive structures on the left side of Dnipro. As we move across Dnipro River to Kherson city itself, for two days straight, Russians attacked the second fire department. In response to that, Ukrainians did a precise attack against the cluster of Russian forces in Havrilivka. And to make things even worse for Russians, Ukrainians reportedly were able to destroy another Russian military warehouse in Tokmak, which has been dangerously close to the military barracks. And as a result of this, Russians lost at least 200 soldiers, but this information has not been yet confirmed by the general staff of Ukraine. But the most pleasantly surprising news of the recent days is that according to the representative of the president in Crimea, Denis Chistikov, Ukrainians are getting very close to some very important logistical routes to the north of this peninsula. What he basically meant is that some roads which connect the Kherson region and Crimea are under fire control of Ukrainians. What he basically meant is that some roads which connect Kherson region and Crimea are in the range for Ukrainian high Mars. And in case Ukrainians advance in the Zaporozhye region as well, this might completely separate the peninsula from the rest of occupied Ukraine. Because of this, the local suppliers are already refusing to bring back and forth their products, and because of this, the prices for such things as food and fuel inside Crimea are getting pretty high. Some civilians, if you remember from my previous episodes, already started leaving Crimea through Crimean Bridge. And those who still remain on the peninsula are basically playing with the lottery, because if you remember in the past, Ukrainians already proven that the Crimean bridge is not as safe as it seems. And it is my personal assumptions that as soon as Ukrainians can take under full fire control the north of Crimea, in the next couple of days we might see the Crimean bridge being attacked once again, so that Ukrainians eliminate all the possible routes to retreat very quick. So yeah, seeing how dangerously close Ukrainians are getting to Crimea, and I mean just overall unfavorable conditions of the Russian army, the Russian government is looking for every opportunity to end this war and make it look like they did not lose. One of the ways of doing this is, for example, through bluffing. What we see right now is happening in Belarus. And another way is by issuing 
the most ridiculous ultimatums about which we'll talk right now. But in order to fully understand the absurdity of the situation, let me briefly take you down the memory lane. So, it all started back in December, when the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Lavrov, yes, the one who likes to smoke, he said that Russia actually never looked for peace negotiations with Ukraine. But at the same time, he said Russia is always ready to listen to the other side. So yes, as you can see, we want to end this war, but let it be you who start the negotiations. It's not us looking for peace talks, it's us <laughs> ready to listen. This uh, uh, ready to listen is basically uh, the same category as victoriously retreating, goodwill gesture, advancing backwards, you get the idea. Later on, Sergei Lavrov made another statement, which basically said is that in case there is a serious proposal, Russia is ready <laughs> to talk, but it must take into consideration the interests of Russia. And later on, this transformed into the most ridiculous ultimatum, <laughs> also by Sergei Lavrov, who said that Ukraine must still surrender even if Russia retreats. What Lavrov basically meant here is that the Ukraine's capitulation is for their own good. So it's like, yes, <laughs> it was Ukraine who was taking the majority of its land back in the last several months. Ukraine is obviously slowly but surely winning, but it is Russia who says that you surrender, because if you don't, we will make you pay. And then the support for this ridiculous ultimatum came from the Kremlin, from Dmitry Peskov himself. And he said, even if there is peace with Ukraine, Russia will not leave the occupied territories. And I mean, yes, first of all, I think it is pretty obvious that as long as Russians are on occupied territories, not a single peace is possible, right? But let's go along with Dmitry Peskov. He said that at this very moment Russia does not have a peace plan for Ukraine as long as they do not acknowledge the annexed territories, which are Luhansk, Donetsk, Zaporozhye and Kherson. And I mean, yeah, you already see it as well, right? It's like, we will continue the war, we will keep our soldiers, but let's just call it peace. And then, when obviously Ukraine declined all of these peace proposals, Russians were like, that's it. We can never agree with these Ukrainians, they never listen. Pretty much exactly this was said by once again Sergei Lavrov, who said that Ukrainians are being pretty unreasonable. So it's like, yeah, why don't you want us to let keep the territories? Why don't you want us let keep our soldiers? Don't you think this is pretty fair? Don't you want peace? Don't you want to this war to be over? I don't understand you Ukrainians. And pretty much yes, not a single country that still has common sense will ever agree to this, I don't even know how to call them, to these requirements. And that is why it looks like Russia decided to try a new approach, which is basically to push the Western authorities to force Zelensky to negotiate. Because in their own understanding, if Ukraine does not listen to us, maybe they will listen to their sponsors. And I mean, yeah, I personally think that Russia is bluffing with, for example, this alleged invasion from Belarus, but once again, you can never know what's gonna happen in the future. And if you don't want to miss any of these events, just once again, please subscribe to my channel. It only takes one click. And if you want to support my work financially, please consider becoming my channel mm. member, use a PayPal link or become my Patreon. We'll receive early access to the uncensored footage. You can find all the other useful links to the right and down below. Thank you so much for your attention, Tavarishi, and see you on Monday.